the news. Absolutely. And we'll start off with a story about parking. Now, Rio Ferdinand, who apparently is a footballist of some kind. All right. <laughs> Who's he play for? Manchester United. Ah, oh, that's how he's able to afford an Aston Martin vanquish. And he should be able to pay the £40 ticket he got for not parking it within the box which wasn't wide enough for the car. Well, shouldn't the box be wide enough for a car? It would make sense, wouldn't it, really? Yeah, he's lucky. I got a ticket the other day, and I kid you not, for being parked badly. <laughs> Since when did it become like ice skating? Well, I'm all standing there. No, I don't think that is well parked. Four, and only three from the Nigerian judge. <laughs> and that's kind of negative as well. If they're going to do that, it's got to be carrot and stick. So they need to do something positive. If they think you've parked particularly well, they should commend you. Maybe give you a rosette on your windscreen. Yeah, book token. Something no, actually useful. <laughs> yeah. While we're on the subject of parking, I um, you know where we nail this programme together? It's in the middle of London, OK? There's a multi-storey car park next door, two hours, nine pounds in there. So if you're two hours and five minutes, 18 quid. Well, I went into Oxford last weekend, parked on double yellow lines right outside where I wanted to be, okay? Took the children out for lunch, went to see James Bond, got back five hours later, 20 quid parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty reasonable. That's That's well, yeah. pounds. But you invented valet park, didn't you? I did. Valet parking. Yep. I was... Um, Used to live in Fulham, right next to the car pound in London, so you could drive up to the West End, have a few drinks, leave the car, wobble home, best way you could, wake up in the morning, they towed it home for you. <laughs> <laughs> it was pricey, but kind of worth it. <laughs> News now of the new Micra. Um, a rather gorgeous looking little thing as well. Mm. That's, um, mm. that's actually not it though, that's the only thing. Uh. Lovely though it is. They will do that eventually. This is going to be the new Micra, which is well, it's all right. That's not bad. I've always quite liked the Micra myself. The important thing about it though is, loaded with technology, even in a small car, it's even going to have, and you'll have probably seen this, keyless entry. So you walk up to the car and... and no, I've got some experience of that. And there is a slight problem with it, because you keep a little smart card in your wallet. OK, you get out the car, push a little button, door's locked. You walk away and you think, is that locked? So you walk back to check, because it recognises the smart card, sees you come, it's open. Uh, <laughs> you uh, you could be just, there for days. You could, you just, the only way you know whether it wasn't locked is someone nicks it. Yeah, that's the only way yeah. you find out the definite. Last week there was a bit of an issue um, about Jeremy's Mercedes SL55 AMG. Which when, you stole. Yeah, we, we kind of did. <laughs> Which you said. stole. And do you know what's really funny? Is we've had, I don't know how many emails, hundreds, from people saying that the car that was driven around the track by the Stig wasn't mine. Awesome. The thing, no, really, the thing was, when I drove it in the road test, I changed my plates. I put SL55 AMG on, so no one knows what my number plate is. Did you bother changing the plates? <laughs> no, not really. You did steal my car. Yeah, pretty much. So if we can just clear that up, but there is more news here. If that's left you downhearted, this won't cheer you up at all, because now there's a better one. Brabus, German tuning house, yeah. you'll have heard of them probably. Yeah. They brought out the K8. Uh, basically, it's going to be about 75 brake horsepower, Ooh. even more than before. Ooh. It's tricked up with great wheels, and I mean, that, that is a big, mean car. They is that gay? Oh, no. Who thinks that's gay? That's still gay. <laughs> Sorry, Jeremy. What's that going to cost, then? How that, much? It doesn't make any difference no, no, how much it's going to cost. It's no. gay. <laughs> car news. Vauxhall. I love Vauxhalls. <laughs> the one I particularly like is the Zafira. It's the sort of astracized estate thing with seven seats. You can fold the back seats into the boot. Well, now they've done it again with an even smaller one. It's called the Mariva. An unpronounceable, meaningless name. Uh, there it is. That's a Mariva. Only got five seats, but the ones in the back will fold into the floor completely. Or you can take the middle one out. Oh, there's some shots of it here. Look, from the motor show, which is happening at the Neck Apparently in Birmingham. Apparently so, yeah. Lots of cars. Look, they just fold into the floor and you can take the middle ones out. It's a fantastically clever piece of design. Vauxhall, hopeless at everything, but very good at seats. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are. They're really... I would... Family cars. These are very good. Zephyr and that, very, very good. Maybe they should just make a range of furniture and forget the whole car thing. <laughs> because your seats could fold into your floor in your living room exactly. and you'd have loads of space and then if loads of people came around you could fold them all out. That's no, a, that's, that's a very good idea, Vauxhall seating in your dining room. Let's do some news. And first up this week, Nissan apparently are coming back to motorsport. Back. Back to motorsport. I didn't know they'd ever been in... Have Nissan ever been in motorsport? 
What do you mean? Le Mans. Where's that? <laughs> Le Mans. Le Mans. <laughs> Did they win? You don't know. Anyway, they're coming back, not to Le Mans. They are, in fact, taking part in the Dakar rally using a pickup truck. We've got a picture of it here. But we're not particularly interested in the car. What we are interested in are the people who will be driving it. They're all completely gay-looking. <laughs> and his pose and everything. The outfits. <laughs> Do they know what the Dakar rally is like? It's very rough out there and sandy and gritty and it ruins your skin. It's awful. They'll have spare tyres and that hand cream and facial yeah. scrub, won't they? He's not going to be looking like that when he gets back. <laughs> That's for sure. Anyway, we wish you all the very best, Ducky. Where are we going now? Oh, I know. Ascari. Yet yes. another supercar. We've actually got it in the studio. This is the oh, first yeah. one, OK? Uh, it's made in Banbury by a company called Ascari, which stands for Anglo-Scottish Car Industries. Didn't know Banbury was Anglo-Scottish, but there we are. Um, it's got a five-litre V8 engine, but they've asked me not to say where it's from. Secret. It's a secret. Okay, fair enough. BMW X5 we had in the studio earlier. Mm. Nice engines. Yeah, nice engines. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> anyway, um... What can we say about it? Well, the problem is, of course, is there's a lot of British companies come along and set themselves up, you know, hoping to make these low-volume sports cars. There was uh, Lee Francis, yeah. there was Jensen, Marcos, Marcos Strathcarran, yeah. and... They've all gone out of business. Mm. All of them. Mm. So we wish Ascari the best of British. No, oh, no, 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 not no, the best no, of British. No, no, no. Sorry, wish them the best of luck. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. Hello. Now, we're talking tonight predominantly about style. Problem is that everyone in the normal world thinks that petrol heads like us, really, are a bit geeky, a bit nerdy, that we spend all day in the loft downloading stuff off the internet. So, with that in mind, I've ditched the jeans tonight, nice. gone for a cargo-style pan, which I've teamed with a blazer. Nice. And you've teamed a tablecloth with a it's shirt, interesting. Stitched in, neatly. And you're wearing a tent. Oh, tucked in. As usual. <laughs> um, and it's not just our retire as well, uh, we've rearranged the audience tonight. Um, we've got the good-looking ones here. This guy, look at him. Very, very uh, fine. Oh, this is a male model, really. Yeah, yeah. You're staying there. You stay there, you get us a good image. And we've put the really ugly ones over there. At the back. Right. Anyone with the spot. If look at this guy there. here. Can you see this guy? Yeah. I, think, <laughs> I can't make my mind up whether he is Robin Asquith out of the window cleaner films yeah. or Keith Emerson. Out of Emerson, Lake and Palm. Kind of a hybrid. So if the floor manager, the guy with the microphone, comes up to you today and says, can you move? It's because you're ugly. <laughs> Don't be hurt. Don't be hurt. Just, hey, you're ugly. It happens. Um, we've also got some car designers in. Um, they're over there. Look at them, all shiny. Yeah. You're never going to make it. To be a car designer, you have to wear black. You have to look like a Chechen rebel. <laughs> they look like an Oasis tribute band. Um, I've got a nice car coming up. Mazda. RX-8, which is going to be glorious. It's a rotary engine again, which of course means it's only 1.3 and it develops 250 brake horsepower. Of course it's rotary, yeah, no. So, well, it's, it, oh, no, it's a wankle thing, isn't it? It is. <laughs> That's a wankle thing. Just get the There's whole thing. There's funny about wankle. Wankle's cool. <laughs> it says here that as a safety measure, a safety measure, the rear doors, because it's got these, these rearwards opening doors, mm. the rear doors can only be opened when the front doors are open as a safety measure, which if you think mm. about it, mm -mm. that's not a safety measure, that's a really nasty design fault. Because <laughs> it's shiny side down in a ditch, you want to open all the doors pretty quick. <laughs> what I like is the optimism here, in the, in the press release it says, this is talking about the engine, right, with a name derived from the word Genesis, derived from, so not similar, they've called it the Renesis. <laughs> Well, we're going to start with A, uh, Enesis, no. Benesis. <laughs> could have started with a P, could have been bad, couldn't they? <laughs> You're right. That close. Another story from the newspapers this week about manufacturers making claims for their cars that they're more economical than they actually are. You know, when you look at the MPG figures, you get three. There's the urban, which is your town driving, that's the lowest. Extra urban, which is the highest figure, that's for kind of motorway fast stuff. And the combined, when they do a difficult sermon, they come up with a number. What people are saying is those figures are a little optimistic. Well, they are. 
because they test their cars on rolling roads and machines. They don't have they don't have no white lines to worry about. They don't have traffic lights to slow down for. You know the ones on Regent Street that are red for two minutes, and that's what does you. What I always do, actually, a uh, piece of information is basically look at the um, urban figure mm. because. As a general rule, that's what you get that's out of a car. The lowest figure. The lowest figure. The one that they say you get around town, your average figure will be that. Except the car I brought down this morning, okay, from uh, <coughs> Mercedes, um, they say, look at this, this is my note paper here. They say that the combined figure, that the average I'm supposed to be able to do, is 19.9 miles to the gallon. Now, on my system, the urban figure is 13 and a half. Would yes. you like to guess what I actually did from London down to the Top Gear base this morning? Ten? Eleven? 6.5 miles. That is good, isn't it? That's plenty of 6.5. That's astonishing. The Steg is saying he doesn't want to drive around because he wants to promote. He's done this CD, okay, a sort of Christmas hit, so he's easy listening. And he wants to promote it, and we've said, it's the BBC, you can't promote it. So he's having a strop. Uh, across the yeah, don't give in. Fair enough. Anyway, uh, let's do the news. Um, Morgan, they're going racing again, which is mm -hmm. good news, good for them. But it's an expensive business, obviously. Recession on the way. There's their car at Le Mans. It's a very expensive game, and sponsorship is hard to come by. Recession on the way. So mm. they've come up with a good idea to raise a few quid to do this. Best way to explain it. Do you remember the Beano Club? Did you join that? It cost. Or is it just? It's just me, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I remember it, and you, it cost you about 5p, and you sent off, and you got a little membership card and a, a badge with little googly eyes on it. So, oh. Morgan yeah. have launched the Morgan Club, and you can join this. It is a bit more expensive than 5p, it's a thousand pounds. Yes, but for that you do get. Uh, you and this helps, that, that's basically instead of sponsorship. They just yeah, get essentially, people... yeah, all these people join, thousand pounds, that goes in the kitty so they can go racing. Right, okay. And for your thousand pounds, you drive yourself over to the circuit, obviously, to go and watch the racing. But when you get there, if you're a member, right. you get entrance to the circuit and a seat in the grandstand. A seat? Yeah. What sort of seat? It'll be like a red plastic thing. Not a throne, then. Which is oh. what I'd want for a thousand pounds with tiger skin and <laughs> sunscreen over yeah, exactly. the top. And some half naked Fijian girls no, chilling me. No, it doesn't say anything about any of that, Jeremy. No, but okay. you do get to put your name on a list of other people who've given Morgan a thousand pounds. You get private access to the team, which, considering it's a 24 hour race and they'll be on the circuit for three quarters of an hour. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> 23 hours to grill about what went wrong. <laughs> what exactly. Do you not get, like, you know, access to, like, a clubhouse, like a, you know, a tree house or something with a ladder? <laughs> where you can Go and no. talk about Morgan's. Afraid not, but you do get to buy limited edition clothing. Buy. It's a bit steep, isn't it? Maybe I won't. What about safety? I think a lot of people think that all cars are about the same. They all have to pass the same kind of tests, but actually they're not. There's an organisation now called Euro NCAP, OK? And they test loads of cars and grade them. They're independent on our behalf. One, two, three, four, five stars. And so far, the only cars that have got uh, five stars are the Renault Laguna, and the Mercedes C-Class, okay? But they've just tested 18 more cars, and four of them have got five stars. And they are, this is important, you should know this, Mercedes E-Class, the Renault Valsartis, which we looked at last week, the Renault Megane, five stars for That's a Renault a Megane, and the Saab 93, which you've been driving. That's true. So not only is it good for the environment and cleans the air if you go through a mucky city. It's not just the air, that thing. That'll suck rabid bats in. <laughs> <laughs> Clean them up, nice and fluffy, shoot them out the back <laughs> end, no bats. rabies on them. How lovely. The, the thing is, with those cars, I mean, if you looked at those cars, you wouldn't obviously think, would you, a Velsatis? Well, a Megane, you wouldn't look at a Renault Megane and think, is that safer than a Mercedes S-Class? No. They also test for pedestrian safety, you know, if you actually run into someone, and all of them do either badly or very badly, or in the case of the Suzuki Grand Vitara, appallingly, it got no stars. So basically, right, if you find yourself in the middle of a dual carriageway, there are two cars coming towards you, you know you're going to be run over. If one of them's a Suzuki Grand Vitara, go for the other one. Yeah. <laughs> right, the news, and we thought this week we'd look at what to look forward to next year. Yes. Because although we're losing the Esprit, there's quite a lot of supercars to get excited about. Quite a lot's an understatement. Mm. It's about half a million of them. Best supercar coming next year has got to be this, the Porsche Carrera GT. Oh, absolutely oh, gorgeous. V10 engine, again, £250,000, but just look at it. That's just gorgeous. so beautiful. Oh. That's the most beautiful car yeah. 
That's a very... <laughs> I've seen in a very, 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 very long time. And the new Viper, which is the uh, American equivalent of a sports car. Yeah. yeah. In the same way, I guess, that George Bush is the equivalent of a president. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> there it is. 8.3 litres, 500 horsepower, and that's not enough. Because there's a new Bugatti coming out next year, which has got a thousand horsepower. It's called the Varian. It has a thousand. I want to. How do you get a thousand horsepower into a car? You have to open the glove box. There'll be forty horses in it. But Thirty-six in the ashtray. A couple of us. Yay! Dobbins under the seat. Look at it. A thousand horsepower. That is an astonishing amount of power. You'll um, go from naught to the grave in four seconds. Immediately. <laughs> I'm dead. I accelerated. Straight up a tree. Dead. Um, in the news this week, more news of Americans becoming very, very gullible. This is a bit worrying, actually. The pop I'm going to quote direct from the press here. The popularity of television broadcasts of live high-speed car chases has led to a dramatic rise in criminals trying to outrace pursuing officers. This is in Los Angeles. In other words, they're surprised that when you put these guys stealing cars and driving really fast on the telly, more people do it. No, you can buy a beeper and it goes off when a chase is happening. Yeah. <laughs> it, it'll be, Whoa, because why well, I turn over and watch that. And the Americans are surprised that more people are stealing cars to this. They've actually got people, there are cases of offenders, waving to helicopters, filming the pursuit and attempting spectacular... <laughs> Get a load of this! <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm telling and the thing is, of course, they've got those big, powerful police cars. They wouldn't yeah. work here, I don't think, because it would be like your beeper going off. There's a medium-speed police chase. <laughs> Chap in an Astra. Have you seen the film Fast and Furious? Yes, it yeah. is the worst film ever made by a human being. Ooh, what do you dreadful. mean, no? <laughs> he turns out in a hat you like, Fast and Furious, in that hat. <laughs> OK, my case rests. Not Fast said. and Furious was made for people in hats like that. Yeah. <laughs> it it really was, was shocking. I tell you what it was, it was basically a group of people in hats like that <laughs> driving around in ludicrous, improbable, very fast American cars. Well, they're making another. Hoorah! But they've got it sussed, they've got it sorted. They obviously looked around and thought, mm, well, the cars we used in the last one must not have been very good because the film was rubbish. We'll sort this out, make it better. They looked around. Well, Bond's got an Aston Martin, hasn't he? There's Jags in that film. They must have worked their way down a fairly lengthy list of manufacturers because they've ended up with this Hyundai Elantra. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> See how the wheels don't fit. No, he's, he, that's the car they're using. That's going to rescue Fast that's, and Furious. That's going to save it. And you called it a what? You, Hyundai. 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 Bless you. Hyundai. You know, I was in America a couple of years ago filming at this tech place in Texas, which is the biggest car dealership in the world. The frontage is a mile long. And I said to the guy who owned it, what do you sell here? And he went, we sell a lot. And he mispronounced every single one. Hyundai, <laughs> Mitsubishi, <laughs> Toyota, <laughs> Nissan, Jaguar, <laughs> BMW. <laughs> every single one of them was wrong. And you call it a Hyundai. I prefer Hyundai. Hyundai. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Fast and Furious 2 yeah. starring a Hyundai. I'd watch it. Great. Here we go. Astra. Oh, we've Ooh. all been waiting for it. No, come on. <laughs> Hot Astra, 200 brake horsepower, okay, but 16 and a half grand. That's three and a half grand cheaper than the RS Focus. Mm -hmm. Nearly as much power. The thing I can't work out. Back, I know, I know, no. but back in the old days, 200 brake horsepower in a Cos, it was a really quick yeah. car. Not to 60 on this seven seconds, which is quick, but it's yeah, not but RS right. Focus. It's a Vauxhall, you <laughs> blithering idiots. That's it. <laughs> it's a, all right, you're right. There's the V. Nobody's going to buy one. The end. Um, this week, the Motor Show. Did you see? They ran a commercial to go to the motor show, which we've got here, and they basically used a semi-naked girl. And there were all sorts of semi-naked girls at the, uh, neck. at the neck in Birmingham. The woman who complained, she's the new Labour Minister of something or other, Patricia Hewitt. She's quite fit, actually. She is. <laughs> maybe it's a power thing, I don't know, but she's, no, she's got she's something. <laughs> yeah. um, but really, using sex to sell cars, it is very last week, and uh, it's uncool. In it fact, is. I can't think of anything more uncool than that. Strangely enough, Jeremy, I can. Really? Uh, yeah, the news this week, Transport 2000, you've probably heard of them, campaigning group. Mmm. A great name. This Transport was 2000. Two years ago, yeah. it would have been great, wouldn't it? Did yeah. you not see that coming in 99? We could have a problem with our name, guys. Change the station. <laughs> anyway, they're taking the government to court because they want the government to stop painting speed cameras fluorescent yellow. They want them to be grey and hidden so they catch more motorists. 
I think that's really I'll tell you what, I've got the thing here, Transport 2000, just so that you know who they are. Um, they say in their own, I think this is their own website, Transport 2000's vision is of a country where traffic no longer dominates our lives, where many of our journeys can be made on foot or cycle or using public transport, where you don't need a car to enjoy the countryside or city life. What's the word I can use at this time of night? <laughs> I've got to go to Newcastle. How about a walk? Places are a long way apart. That's why we have cars. The government has announced that it's going to spend £145 million pounds on the road network over the next five years, which works out at £29 million pounds a year, and yep. that's enough to pay for three and a half miles of motorway a year. Wow. Think of the freedom we can enjoy with that. Three miles a year. Looking forward to it. I three can't wait. Three I'm miles of motorway. Car news. Um, Fiat, first of all, they are in deep trouble. They're currently losing £2 million a day. Well, they've got a new model which they think is going to stem the flow. There it is. Look at that, they're saved. <laughs> they're saved. Oh, they'll be fine with that. It's huh? an estate version of the Stilo, and um, <laughs> it is actually very important this works because if Fiat goes to the wall, they will take with them Lancia, Alfa Romeo, Maserati and Ferrari. And of course they won't go to the wall because they're going to get bought by General Motors. So if you don't buy one of these, General Motors gets Ferrari. It's that simple. So buy one. I found the perfect investment, OK? It's a house, south of France, and it's currently for sale. Now this is the house, all right? There it is. Beautiful house. Very nice. And then in the grounds, there's the racetrack. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I kid you not, it's got a full-on racetrack in it. Every home should have one. Look at, that, look at that, I mean, that, and that's all yours, so it's not like anyone's going to complain. This is a motorcyclist called Leon Humphreys, who has been taken to court by the DVLA because he forgot to tell them that his Suzuki was off the road, OK? He has claimed that under medieval law, he's entitled to settle the dispute in a trial by combat. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> He says that under medieval law, which is still on the statute books, he's entitled to fight a champion nominated by the licensing agency. The DVLA champion. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, it awesome. is in Swansea. Oh, then I'll oh, do it. Yeah, yeah it'll be. Exactly. <laughs> I'll take it on. A few fly halves, the I'll have him. <laughs> Except what they ought to remember, the DVLA, I have to remember, it is a fight to the death. <laughs> quite strict. And you're allowed to use swords, knives or blacksmith's hammers. Nice. Now nice that's to have good television. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> that's something I'd want to watch. <laughs> the VW uh, Touareg. Tw tw we did evolve a technique for actually saying. Yeah, yeah. Touareg. Touareg. How can you not know? It's a, it's a Saharan tribe of people. The Touareg. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say it, but that's what it is. It's the Touareg. The Touareg, I'll tell you what it is, it's a, it's a Porsche Cayenne with the word Porsche crossed out and Volkswagen written in in crayon. The most amazing thing about that is a V10 diesel engine. Yeah. Oh, I've nodded off. <laughs> <laughs> just not said diesel. Oh. That'll be fun. Oh, wait a minute, you say the word diesel and my seat goes into recline mode. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're not going to get that now. fixed again. <laughs> Talking about cars for girls, um, MX-5. Now I quite like these, actually. They've been around for a lot of time, but they've just brought out um, a limited edition. It's 16995 How much is the normal one? Um, 1.8? 15 and a half, so it's about £1,500 more. So you're basically £1,500, yeah? Yep. And what do you get for your 1500 quid? Uh, a few bits and pieces. What you got? you got special leather seats. Nice. Well, they're worth about 60 quid. OK. Um, <laughs> a Nardi two-tone steering wheel. 65. Leather brake, uh, handbrake lever. 67.50. Two-tone gear knob. 68. Um, and a Trilogy badge scuff plate. 68.20. Um, oh, and some chrome air vents. Oh, right. Well, let's make it a nice round £70. And you get a solid silver key ring with three little chips of diamond, quarter carat of diamond. Oh, well, how much are they worth? Well, probably about 70 quid scrap, aren't they? So that's, what, a couple hundred quid for the key fob? A couple hundred quid. So £270 and they're charging an extra... 1500. Probably nice. best avoid that one then. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Don't worry, there's quite a lot of sports car coming as well. Um, Chrysler, for instance, is launching the £26,000 Crossfire. Mm. Here it is. Um, now, it's got, it's basically underneath, it's a Mercedes SLK. It was designed by a British person and it's been built in Germany. So that's a car for America to be proud of. <laughs> 
And yeah. we've got the new Mazda RX-8 to look forward to. Yep. 22,400 quid, that's seriously good value. Wankel engine, suicide back doors. The thing about those Wankel engines, though, they used to have a big problem because it was something called the rotor tips deep mm. inside the engine. They used to wear out much too quickly, didn't they? Mm. So I think they're going to replace them. And now they solved that. They're using the hardest substance known to man. Diamond. No, oh, harder than diamonds. I'll tell you what the hardest substance known to man is, what they're lining the rotor tips with. It's Weetabix. <laughs> Bear with me on this. Weetabix that's been left in a cereal bowl and then put in the dishwasher. <laughs> trying to get it off? Nothing. No, I'll buy that. That would do it. Yeah. I have put 60 tonnes of TNT into the bowl to get it out, <laughs> blew the bowl to smithereens, still stuck to the pieces. <laughs> that would do it. No doubt about it. So that's what they're using. It's the Mazda Weetabix. Right, news from Citroen. The Bolingo Multispass looked at in the very beginning of the series, Jeremy, and we all agreed, fantastic car. I mean, a great family car, car-like ride and all the rest of it. Yep. But best of all, cheap. Well, this is the new one. I say new, it's not like new, new. It's a bit of a facelift, but it does look prettier. But the really important thing is, it's still <laughs> Yes, I was going to say prettier. <laughs> prettier is the relative. Prettier. That's right. If you got Anne Widdicombe and hit her on the forehead with a light tap from a hammer... She'd look prettier. That's what I'm saying. It's prettier. Yeah. It's prettier. Yeah. Um, but mm. the, the most important thing, looks aside, is you get all of that package and it's cheap, and it still is, because they're still doing the same VAT-back deal That's until right. the end of the year, which means it's about eight grand. That's actually a lot of car for eight I grand. Know. And still yeah. a good one. Uh, here's some stirring news for us. Uh, in that it's a very stirring car. The new Bentley Continental GT, that is a very, very big car indeed. I think it's gorgeous. You're a bit... About it's fine. Angle. It's It's got a slightly Vanessa Feltsy rear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is something of her. But the important thing about the car is the engine, right? Powering that is a W12. Massive engine. It's the same engine they put in the Volkswagen Phaeton, which I've already driven at 200 miles an hour. Exactly. They decided at Bentley... Not enough girl stuff. Strap a couple of turbos to it, see how it'll do then. Which is great, but it's given them an interesting problem. It's now chucking out so much torque that they can't tell us how much torque it's putting out. Every time they strap it to the machines that they measure it on, it breaks them. These are things the size of a building, these machines. They strap it down, tie it all in. You could tie it to this base here and it would just spin the whole we'd, studio We'd actually around. go around again. Yeah, that's exactly what would happen. So, unfortunately, uh, they can't tell you how powerful it is. Just lots and lots of torque. Renault Valsartis. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. We saw it earlier on and we decided it's a stylish car, didn't we? Okay, yeah. well, it's now been voted Tow Car of the Year. Eh? <laughs> oh, it gets better, this. <laughs> <laughs> but this is... This is the best thing, right? You say, no, I'm going to buy a Renault because I like the style. It's the only reason for buying that car is because it's stylish. And you go and whack a double-axle buccaneer on the back of it. <laughs> why? Your street cred is gone. But the best thing I love about this is why it's the best tow car. And they compared it to a Range Rover V8, a Mercedes-Benz ML500, and, uh, well, a Nissan Tirano 3. That's another four-wheel drive thing. And they say that's better. So I had a look to see why the tow car of the year jury's done it. And they say it's because, and I'm quoting, it's got automatic headlamps, wipers, and an F1-style integrated fuel filler cap. <laughs> stop everything. At the NEC this week... Actually, stop everything. I'll tell you what I saw this morning. Go on. Ready? I saw a bus on the M4 bus lane. An actual bus lane? <laughs> First time in five years. It was, a, it, was a, it was an airport bus taking some stewardesses for a little light sex in London, but... <laughs> it was a bus. Oh, that was... I can't, it's a bus! You can see everyone crammed into those two lanes, been there for four and a half years. Finally one comes That's by. worth the money, then. I mean, it's, it's being used. That's yes, exactly. It's a million quid, that cost. We all know the... Smart, the, the one that's been around for a few years, the one you can park nose on to the pavement. Well, now they've got delusions of grandeur, and they've launched, well, I think we've got some footage of it here. Two versions, there's a uh, coupe, and there is a cabriolet. Now, the cabriolet is interesting. You've got an electric folding roof, rear engine with a turbocharger on it. You've got rear-wheel drive, big fat alloys, anti-lock brakes, traction control, basically just like a 911 turbo. Okay, except a 911 turbo is £90,000. This, the car you're looking at here, £11,750. <laughs> that was the least convincing <laughs> noise I've ever heard in my life. Wow. But eleven seven fifty. That, that is incredible, actually. If this is the future now here, I'm not scared of that anymore. You can bring it on. Take yeah. as much of the future as you like.
That's stunning. Are there any really, like, you know, sensible cars coming next year? Well, I've got a list, actually, of the other cars that are coming, and the answer to your question is, um, not really. Um, <laughs> Porsche, uh, they've made a £50,000 150 mile an hour off-roader. Not sensible. That's not, not sensible. Not sensible. <laughs> Volkswagen, which as we all know means people car, they've made a £60,000 feet on. People's no, sensible. People's no. car. The economy's obviously going better in Germany than we thought. Yep. Um, oh, there is one, actually. There is one sensible car, the Vauxhall Signum. Now, it's basically a Vectra. Oh, I'm nodding off. Oh, the <laughs> Signum. Stay, stay no, 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 stay with us. Oh, I'm coming back. I'm okay. back. We mustn't be put off by its veteranness because it's not like a Zafira, which is the sort of seven-seat Astra. It only has five seats, but apparently the ones in the back all move about and recline and things. They're really clever, the ones in the back. It's going to be the first car ever where people will be fighting to get in the back. No, no, you drive. Really, you, <laughs> you have the front. You drive it, I'll sit back here. Thanks very much. Tinted windows, no one will know I'm in it. Anyway, here endeth the news.